Yo, what's going on YouTube and welcome back to another Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate Weapon Tutorial. And in today's video, I'm going to be taking a look at the Light Bowgun. Now first up, if you're new to being a gunner, but you're set on bowguns as opposed to the bow, then the Light Bowgun is a good place to start. Being light, you are still relatively free to move around. So while you still have the added bonus of being able to engage your enemy at range, you aren't weighed down quite as much as when you're using the Heavy Bowgun, which I'll cover in the next video. However, as always, there's a trade-off. See, your light, more agile bowgun isn't quite as powerful as its heavy counterpart, so your damage output will be a little bit lower. That doesn't mean to say that this is a bad weapon. On the contrary, it's still an extremely effective weapon, but you just need to make sure you make good use of your different bullet types to try and maximise your damage output. And I'll speak about them in just a second. And on top of that, to be really effective with the light bowgun, you need to know your monsters. See, with the light bowgun especially, you're going to make up for the lack of damage if you're shooting a monster's weak spot, as opposed to firing at it randomly. So, it's worth reading up on a monster before you fight it. So first up, basic moves. If you press X, you'll draw your weapon out, then if you press A, you'll shoot your bullets, and if you press X again, you'll reload. Alternatively, if your weapon's drawn and you need to reload, then with it away, you can hold down R, press X and A together, and you can draw into a reload. Then if you hold L, and press X or B, you can cycle between your different bullet types. And then once you've found one you want, pressing X will load that particular bullet type. Then if you press R, you'll get a first person aiming reticle. This is useful if you're trying to be accurate, perhaps you're trying to break the horn on a monster, or maybe you're trying to hit the spikes in its back. Either way, you can use this to pinpoint your shots. Alternatively, instead of tapping R, if you hold down R, you'll bring up this. This is your third person aiming reticle. The bonus of this one is that you can move around with the aiming reticle up, so that way you can still look around with your enemies, you can use the d-pad to move it up and down, and you can then fire at the chosen direction. Whereas if you press R, and you scope it like this, then you can look around, but you can't move. Now you do have an additional option on top of shooting, if you press the special icon which is in the top right of your touchscreen, you'll smack the enemy with the butt of your bowgun. Then if you're jumping off a ledge and you press X, you'll do a downward smash with your bowgun. And on top of that, if you need to reload your weapon, then if you press X whilst jumping off a ledge, you'll smack downwards with your bowgun whilst reloading. Two birds, one stone. Now aside from that, similar to the bow, if you have your weapon drawn out and you press B, you'll hop backwards. You can chain this together twice, so one and two. And you can also chain this in different directions, for example backwards and left, or backwards and right. And if you do this after shooting, you can chain two sideward hops, left and left, or you could go right then left if you want it to be back at the exact same point. You can chain these together however you like, but you can only do it twice. And obviously only while you still have stamina. Without stamina, you can't hop backwards. So those are your basic moves. Now let's talk bullets, because this is where this weapon comes into its own. See, given that the light bowgun is the faster of the two, it's more often used to inflict elemental and status effects on monsters, whereas the heavy bowgun is more typically a powerhouse which is all about dealing heavy damage. So in that respect, you could see the light bowgun as more of a support gunner, while the heavy bowgun is the main gunner. But again, don't let that put you off. You can still use this quite effectively to solo monsters. That being said, just like the bow, different bowguns can use different types of bullets. Again, this is the demo, but in the full game, if you bring up your menu, you go to the second page, go down to your equipment screen, then you can find out the list of bullets that your particular bowgun will support. Now, different bullet types also have different ammo capacities. So, for example, as you can see as I scroll through these, the ammo at the top of the screen will change depending on the shot that I have selected. And then obviously once I select that and I load that, that determines how many bullets I have before I need to reload. Now, largely, a lot of these bullets are relatively self-explanatory. Normal shots are your base ones, Pierce will obviously do piercing damage, and then you have your elemental ones, paralysis, poison, sleep, etc. However, the ones I do want to call out are these ones here in green. If you have a bullet that is coloured in green, it means it can be rapid fired. So for example, with this one, Pierce S level 1, then I can get 3 shots off in rapid succession. But it gets even better. Take a look at the top of the screen. This particular bullet has 3 rounds in the magazine. However, when I get off a rapid shot which fires 3 bullets, it only uses 1 shot. Now the subsequent rapid shots are weaker, however stacking them together in quick succession do still amount to some pretty good damage. Do note though that when you're rapid firing, you cannot roll out of it, you cannot sidestep out of it, so it does put you in a slightly vulnerable position. So if you are going to do it, make sure you have an opening, and also don't do it if a monster's charging towards you. Now the other big thing I want to cover about this weapon is the same topic I raised in my bow tutorial, critical distance. This also applies to bow guns. But thankfully, just like with the bow, it's pretty easy to work out what that is, simply because, just like the bow, if you land a shot in the perfect critical distance, your screen will shake, and if you land it outside of that, then it will remain still. So it's pretty easy, if you're new to this weapon, to work out whether you're doing it right or not. The main difference with the light bowgun, however, is that with the bow, your critical distance depended on the type of bow you had, 
Whereas with the bowgun, your critical distance depends on the type of bullet you're using. So for example, I've got my normal bullets equipped. Now these are typically close range bullets. So if I stand near to this monster and I land my shot, you'll see that my screen shakes. But if I'm further away and I land a shot, you'll see that the screen doesn't shake. This, again, just like the bow, is your indicator. The screen shaking implies you're in critical distance, which implies you're doing the optimal damage, and it then confirms you're doing a good job. Remember, the light bowgun doesn't deal as much damage, so it's imperative that you remain in your critical distance, otherwise your already weaker shots are going to be doing even less damage. Now, as I said, different bullets do have different critical distances, so for example, pierce shots typically have a medium to long range distance, whereas normal shots typically have a closer range distance. You will have to practice with this, and as with all of these weapons, practice makes perfect. If you want to use it, you simply want to pick up the weapon, use it for a bit, learn things like a critical distance, get used to them, and once you recognize them, you know where they are, you can then memorize that position, and you can reliably shoot from it. And just before I bring this video to an end, there is one last thing I want to speak about. Now again, unfortunately I can't show you this, as in the demo, this bowgun doesn't actually support this. But, in Monster Hunter, later in the game, when you get higher rank light bowguns, you'll have the ability to remove what is known as the limiter. And what this does is by removing it, it removes your ability to rapid fire. Which, at first, might sound like a bad thing. But when you remove that, it provides you with the ability to perform what is known as a super reload, which you can do by pressing X and A. A super reload effectively loads every single bullet you have into your heavy bowgun, and it allows you to switch between bullet types and fire them without having to reload each time. So let's say for example you have normal, pierce, sleep, paralysis and poison. You load all of them using your super reload, you can then fire out your pierce shots, fire out your normal shots, switch, fire out your paralysis, whatever you want to do, but each time you switch you no longer need to reload, which is extremely powerful and if you have a light bowgun that supports high ammo capacities, this can be extremely useful. And that, my friends, is pretty much it. Those are the basics you'll need to know to get started. There are a few other things to consider when crafting bowguns later in the game, such as reload speed and recoil, and also you can customise your bowgun with things such as silencers and power barrels, but for the time being, this should be enough to help you on your way. Hopefully you found it helpful, and if you did, then make sure you hit the like button down below and give this video a thumbs up, and if you're not already, then make sure you subscribe to be part of the RX Gaming Nation, and so you can stay up to date on more Monster Hunter coverage in the future. The last weapon I have to cover is the heavy bowgun, so that'll be out on Monday, and once that's done, I can move on to general Monster Hunter basics, things like trapping, crafting, farming, etc. So stay tuned, because there's plenty more to come, but otherwise, thank you very much for watching, take it easy, catch you next time, peace out.